folks, and welcome to Sunday Morning Summer Flange. I'm Matt, and I'm all alone. Uh, true story. Uh, my brother, who rarely visits, in fact, I don't think he's been here in years, all, probably maybe even close to a decade. He came in to visit as of this recording here uh, for a few days, and I tried to keep him one more day. I should have done this earlier with him, but I wanted him to join me on the podcast because I said, hey, look, I don't have, uh, I knew. Uh, that I didn't have time to have uh, Benjamin and Mikey over. And I was like, dude, we should do a podcast. He was all for it. And I was like, and I waited. My, my kid had double ear infections. Everyone was, you know, everyone had an ear infection. Just about all the kids had ear infections. And so I, I delayed it a couple of days while he was here. Didn't see him for a few days. Saw him one night. We watched a movie together. And then I was like, hey, if you can stay one more day. He's like, no, dude, I got to go home. Got to go home. So, I mean, he'll be back next month. And maybe then... I'll bring him on, but um, and if anyone knows, I did one of my old YouTube videos was a sing along, and I think it was the first one we did where we kind of mouth out the words to something. And it's me and him rocking out, you know, in my old apartment, and that's 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 uh, that's Jordan. So I warned him for this one, and he said it was a it was a nice idea for an episode, and uh, but and, and we talked a little bit about things. I'm not going to give any a hit. Well, no, I'll wait. Maybe he'll come back and do his. Now, uh, this is one I got to give credit where credit's due. This is from uh, uh, Benjamin and Mikey. One a few weeks ago, they were talking about good ideas. This is a great one. I want them to be here, but unfortunately, they couldn't make it. Benjamin is uh, at this point of the recording. He was taking night classes right now, and so he doesn't have a night to do it. Mikey has, I guess, been busy. Like he responded to me about other stuff, but he didn't respond back to me if he was coming in to record. So I don't know, that <laughs> dude. I uh, love him, but anyway, um, it, it, this is top five movie franchises that went off the rails. We talked about TV shows that went too long in the tooth. Okay, and we had the same idea for movies. You know, that just went too long. You know, they should have wrapped it up and, you know, uh, stopped earlier. But where was that turning point? When was it just too bad and it should have continued? I'm not talking about, well, I think we would should have stopped this. At, you know, they should have ignored the third movie or the second movie and just had the third movie. No, we're not going to do that, you know. Um, dang, I just thought of another one just as I was saying that. Because I know another one that would be very good. Even the third movie wasn't as bad. The second movie was garbage. And they should have stopped after the first. So, man, this is really hard now. Now i got to look at my list here. <laughs> I am, You know what? I have decided. I have decided not to do this. I'm not going to. I'm going to do a top five maybe. I'll just list them off here. Because now I have so many. And this is another one that I think they're possibly could have been some crossover even though there's honestly you could say this about thousands of movie franchises right you can say exactly went off the where they went off the rails and man looking at all these yeah i don't think I mean, how many do i have now one two three four five six seven eight yeah oh man i could almost make a top 10 if i thought about this um but as i'm as i'm sitting here just doing this i just thought of another <laughs> one and i thought of one right before i went live too so this is and I, I have not looked this up this is another one that i have not looked up and i just thought of all the franchises and stuff because i'm a guy who watches the you know the directed dvd sequels and whatnot and you know there's a lot of movies some i care about more than others these are the ones that i really cared about because i really like the original movie um, the rule is they at least had to have two movies, obviously, right? At least should have had two movies. So let me give you an example here. I couldn't say, well, Tremors shouldn't have made a Tremors 4 because Tremors 4 is the worst by far. And Tremors 6, not as good either. Kind of a disappointment. But Tremors 5 was decent, and I enjoyed Tremors 7. So to be fair, no, it had to go the full length, even though it had two stinkers in the middle. So that's what I'm meaning. I couldn't do that. What I'm saying is... Once this once this movie came out, every movie afterwards was garbage, and they should have stopped it, right? That's what we're talking about here. Now, again, in the comments, ooh, I bet you're going to have tons of them that I didn't think of. And another shame is, since I don't have any co-hosts, they are going to list some that probably would have changed my mind as well, all right? Because there's certain things, and I'm not going to do slam dunks either. If anyone knows, they did make a national, uh, uh, no, a National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation 2. They made one. It 
has got to be, in my opinion, the worst movie, not just sequel, but the worst movie in the world. It is so bad. Dennis Quaid is in it. He stars his cousin Eddie. It was made off of a budget of maybe $300, maybe $400. I don't know. Uh, but it's done super cheap. It is not funny. It is awful. I mean, awful. It's just a cash grab, you know, direct-to-DVD cash grab they were doing back in the day. So it should have stopped at the one, first one. No, that was too easy. I'm not going to punch down on those. Those direct-to-DVD sequels that you saw from, I mean, you could do this to every Disney movie too, right? Cinderella. They didn't need a two or three. Because I remember my wife, we decided to watch all the sequels to the original movies. And with the exception of Aladdin, most of them sucked. Like Pocahontas 2, I think they made one of those. I didn't like anything after The Lion King. Everyone says, well, one and a half is really good. I didn't think so. I, I, there's nothing there for me. Um, I'm trying to think of what else they did, too. But Little Mermaid 2, terrible, terrible. Bambi 2, get out of here. I mean, that was back when Mike Eisner was just making sequels to every Disney classic, and they sucked. Um, we have watched Beauty and the Beast Christmas show. It's okay. Megan likes to watch it. I'm sure the girls will like to watch it. But for the most part, those are just too easy. There's, there are too easy pickings there. Now, if that meant, I, again, I, I think I told this with the missus, I really liked uh, Return of Jafar. I thought Return of Jafar was really good. And King of Thieves, the third Aladdin movie, was pretty decent too. So those are pretty decent sequels that they put together and put the time in and thought in. But I'm talking about some that just ruined the entire franchise, okay? Just like, oh, awful. Never should have been made. Big budget ones. That's what I should say. Big budget ones. These came out in theaters and probably should not have. All right? So in, in no particular order, let me think about this before I say it. Uh, I may save that one to last because that one hurts my heart. So that would probably be number one. Um but the rest of these are in no particular order. Oh, geez, I could probably do this now because I'm looking at number two. Oh, can I do this all? Three, four. Nah, I could, probably can. All right, so here we go. First one is the easiest one, the one I just thought about, and it's Highlander. Okay, I love Highlander. I love Highlander, the TV show, but they should have stopped the movies. Where? Well, this is where it gets a little tricky. Um, obviously, the source is is horrendous. It's horrendous. It's unwatchable. But you know what? Endgame I didn't like either. And Highlander 2 is just a total nonsensical you know, retelling of the first story, but in the future or something. So they should have stopped after the first one. They could have done the TV show. They could have done the TV show still, but stop doing the movies. Because even though Highlander 3, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but Mario Van Peebles... He was okay in that. That was a decent one. Not the best, but when you're looking at all the other sequels from Highlander, it's an easy second best. Easy. I mean, there's no competition. You know, Highlander 2 and Endgame, I'd have to think about it. I may go with Highlander Endgame, but then Highlander 2 over the source. And, but they're, they're, they're so bad. Everything is so bad after that point. So Highlander, only one movie, and then the TV show. That's, that's how they should have done it. But my goodness, Highlander, what, what a disappointment. Next one. I like the original Halloweens, okay? Uh, Season of the Witch is fine, too. It's fine, too. I enjoy it. My, my wife will not watch that one. She thinks it's garbage because if it doesn't have Michael Myers, it's garbage. Um, I liked the original ha Halloween, too. I think it's a good, solid sequel. You know, it, it continues the story, and I love it. I, I, I think it's good. Um, Halloween... Uh, four and five. Some people, some people say, no, nah, that's garbage. It's garbage, Matt. Ah, it follows the story of Jamie, and it's not bad. It's not bad. It's there. Those are watchable. Now, six, yes, a little bit of a disaster is six. I will give you that. Six is a little bit of a disaster because you have this problem where, uh, you, you know, they're trying to explain the uh, the uh, origins of Michael Myers, but they're also wrapping up the story from uh, number five, you know, the man in the boots, the steel tip boots. Who's he? So it was a, a poor attempt. Donald Pleasant is excellent in it. This is his last performance, and for that, he's great. He's great. There is some high points in this. It's not the best, but I would still include that one. H2O, again, solid. People say, well, that's kind of a soft reboot. It was because they didn't want you to have to watch all the other 
uh, movies except for one and two. And I know they kind of mentioned that, oh, you just have to watch one and then watch seven. But remember, she's in uh, protective custody, so they faked her death. And she's living under a different name, which does tie into the original show. So it has it has strings to say, well, if you did like the original movies, if you've been following it, we'll give you an out. We'll say that Jamie thought her mom died, but she actually went into protective, uh, protective custody, which makes sense, too. Why was she abandoning her child? Because she's hoping that Jamie lives a life without the threat of Michael Myers. You know, so she's also protecting her child. You can say, well, that doesn't mean she's a good mother because she doesn't mention her in the seventh movie. I don't care. I can buy it, and it makes sense to me. And then the worst and where they should have stopped is Halloween Resurrection. The only thing good about Halloween Resurrection is the 10 or 5 minute opening where, spoilers, Jamie Lee Curtis dies. Okay? And and, and honestly, maybe that could have been the ending of H2O. <laughs> you know, Michael finally gets her in the end and then goes back to sleep in his own house. I don't know. Either way, though, Resurrection is atrocious. It is atrocious. It's terrible. And that's where I would stop the series. And then, of course, they did after that. The original owner lost the rights, and it went into the other hands of horrible Rob Zombie remakes and even more Halloween kills, Halloween ends, Halloween's dead. I don't care. I won't even watch those. I won't even. I refuse to watch those. I can't anymore. I just watch the original series if my wife wants to, which is usually every other Halloween. But... Uh, to be honest, I, 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 after seven, I could stop. We do watch eight when we watch them all the way through because I do like the the Jamie Lee Curtis death scene. But after that, I'm usually playing on my phone because the show, the rest of the movie is complete garbage. All right, so there's a few more. Uh, another one that I think is bad, and maybe I'm doing these in order. I don't know because I'm looking through these to see which one I want to name first. And the next one I want to talk about is Prometheus. Yes, it's like a prequel, but it's part of a series that came out. Uh, Aliens, the first movie, is good. It's solid. Sure, it moves a little slow, but watch it again. I think you'll really enjoy it. It is a good uh, horror movie. The second one, yes, I'm a fanboy of James Cameron. I think that is excellent. I think Aliens is near perfect a movie as as a movie can be. Aliens 3 has its problems. I will admit but my brother really likes Aliens 3, and he, he showed me why I should appreciate it. I don't mind it. They went for something different, which was good. You know, I wanted to see gun-toting gun Marines and bla- blaze out action. But they said, no, we need, to, we need to put the setting in something different. You know, so the setting is different for 1, 2, and 3. And so now these, these are like prisoners on a planet, and they don't have all the necessary weapons that Marines have. So if you did just the Marine storyline again, that's just copying what you did before. I get that. And, of course, obviously they didn't have Hudson back or Newt, and so they just you know unceremoniously killed them off. Yeah, that kind of sucks, but they wanted to tell a different type of story. And that's great. I don't mind that. You know, It's fine. It doesn't bother me doesn't bother me at all. They say Bishop for some reason just because he was an awesome character in the second one. But eventually he kind of ends his life too. And Ripley ends her life as she's impregnated with an alien. It's a great ending. uh, Well, oh shoot. I forgot about Aliens Resurrection. Should it stop there? Maybe. Alien Resurrections. uh, I, I saw this one. I think it's called, is the fourth one called? Whatever. Aliens 4. Whatever it's called. That one, man, the ending is horrendous. But I didn't mind the ship crew. I thought they were really good. And the storyline was okay. It was okay. The ending's kind of terrible. Ooh, should it have ended at four? Because I was going to say Prometheus is where it should have ended because it was just it was horrible. But no, I'm going to go back. I'm going to say that Alien Resurrections, that's where it should have ended. They shouldn't make any more Aliens because they made the other one, Aliens Covenant. It was horrible too. I mean, it just gets worse and worse. Like, Aliens Covenant is just, oh, beyond bad. Beyond bad. It's like, Prometheus fooled me at first. When I walked out of the theater, I thought, oh, that was a good movie. And then the more I started thinking about it, the more I thought, no, that was a piss-poor movie. What was I thinking? When I watched Covenant, I I could see it was terrible. Terrible. And don't get me started on AVP. You know, Aliens vs. Predator was just horrendous, too. So, yeah, it should have stopped after Aliens 3. Should have stopped. And I, I do think Aliens 3 is good, and it's worthy of sequel uh, love. And if they would end it there, we would still be talking about this trilogy as being one of the better ones out there. So there you go. All right, so the next one. I am doing these in an order, I guess. Uh, the next one 
is Terminator. Where should they have ended this? Obviously, the whatever one that came out, Dark Tidings or Dark Greetings. I don't know. I don't remember what it's called now. I never saw it. I never saw it because I was done. I was done. Um, but you got the first one, which is just excellent. Just excellent. To be honest, between the first and the second one, it's close. It's close. I am going with James Cameron because T2 is awesome. It has a great lots of memories with me. I saw it. It was the first R-rated film I saw with my dad in theaters. So it has that special moment, and that's what beats it out. But Terminator 1 is really good. Really good. Terminator 3. Ooh, okay. Yes, a step down. I agree. Watchable because, of course, they can't you know stop the future. It looks like the war is going to start anyway, and he's in a safe base, ready to take command, ready to start the legend of John Connor. For that reason, I don't mind it. I don't mind it for that reason. You know, but other than that, yeah, it was wasn't the best. But then, and that was the last time, you know, Arnold was the was a real good Terminator, I guess. But Terminator Salvation was really good. I enjoyed it. I really, I know that was supposed to be a, a trilogy. It's supposed to be a new trilogy where they just talked about the war, the war against man versus machine. And I was like, great, no more stupid time travel because obviously by T three they had run out of ideas for the series. It was bank creatively bankrupt, as they say. But Terminator Salvation, I thought was good. I was like, okay, we're going somewhere. Even the uh, the cheesy TV sh- show was pretty decent. You know, I mean, it, it took a while, but after it got through season two, I was like, okay, I'm in it to win it. I'm interested in what's going to happen here. But it got canceled right before I think Salvation was coming out, which didn't make any sense to me. I know the numbers weren't good for it, but I was like, well, Salvation's coming out. You should at least try to give it a third season and see where it goes. So I was even happy with that. But Salvation, I thought was great. I said, no more time travel. I just want to see the fight. And I enjoyed Terminator Salvation. A lot of people hated it. A lot of people hated it, but I enjoyed it. But Terminator Genesis is where I draw the line. That was garbage. I knew it looked garbage. I didn't want to see it. I always loved Terminator, but I did not want to see it. I got a free ticket to it. I won one at a restaurant. They offered me a free ticket to see Terminator Genesis. They just come out. I was like, oh, okay. Some just promotion. They were working next to the uh, movie theater, and they had a cross promotion about it. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll go see it. I was traveling in Columbus, Ohio. I didn't have anything to do that night. So I was like, well, I may as well you know, catch a movie while, while I'm here. So I went and watched it, free ticket, and it was worse than I ever could imagine. It was horrendous. Again, the other one, Dark Tide or Dark Tidings, Dark Greetings, whatever it's called, I'm not going to watch it. It's just so bad. And it's sad because, again, Terminator Salvation, I loved I thought it was a solid film. You, you're, you're definitely going to disagree with Matt, me on that. But if you do agree with me, I want to hear it. I want to hear it in the comments. You said, yay, yay, Matt. Terminator Salvation. I enjoyed it, too. Which, you know, I, I expect fully one comment of someone who just doesn't really care and just wants to just, you know, they feel pity for me and they go ahead and say it in the chat. Um, that, in the comments, that's fine, too. All right, but anyway, yeah, Terminator Genesis, anything after that, complete garbage, never should have been made. So now I'm at one, two, three, my top three here. No, top four. So I guess Terminator Genesis would have been five. Okay, so here we go. Four. Four. Now I can do these in order. Matrix Resurrections, the fourth one. Now you're saying, well, Matt, hold on. The third one wasn't that good either. You're right. The third one wasn't that good. But it gave us an ending. Neo dies. You know, kind of the end there. I get it. It's fine. It, it is the worst of the three. Definitely. But um, I think it's Resur- is it Resurrection. Whatever the Matrix 4 was. That one doesn't feel like a Matrix movie. It feels like complete and utter garbage. Now, I was excited. Believe it or not, folks, it fooled me. I was like, okay, I'm interested. How does he come back? I mean, and then... It's the whole thing they're talking about. They're making fun of reboots and how reboots never work. And here's here's a generic outcome for a reboot. It's like, oh, okay. So this is going to be different. No, it was beat for beat, the first movie again, but with Trinity. And worse. It was worse than before. I was like, oh, my gosh. So they even made fun of how reboots are bad. And here's why reboots are bad. And by the way, we're going to follow exactly the same formula that we made fun of for being terrible. 
I don't know what they were thinking. I mean, I, I heard the story. The studio was going to make it with or without the director. And the director said, no, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i go ahead and do it. And then some people say, oh, no, the director deep-sixed his own movie. I don't think so. I don't believe that. I think that the director thought that he made a great movie. But in the end, you know, uh, who cares? Who cares? I love Keanu Reeves, which I was excited to see him back as Neo. But that movie was awesome. No, not awesome. Awful. 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 The first movie, awesome. It went from awesome to awful. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> and you just cut out that clip there. But, and even the second one, I think it was called Reloaded, is decent. It's actually pretty good. The only, the only scene, and everyone makes fun of this scene, and two is not the architect at the end who's so confusing, you don't know what's going on. It's kind of like, what? Because it's, it's, the, it's the part two in a uh, trilogy, so I didn't mind that. But the worst part of it, everyone knows this, is the rave scene in the in the cave of men they hit the drums and suddenly they have glow sticks and they're you know doing a little dance and dirty dancing up there like they're in the club that makes no sense it was completely stupid completely dumb i, I don't even know what went on the set that day this hey let's film a rave i mean it's just awful cut that out and you've got a really good sequel movie with great action the third one i mean even when he's in the uh playground fighting a million mr smiths yes the CGI is not that good. <clears throat> you know, it's very dated, but still, it's a fun fight scene. And there's there's tons of good fight scenes and action scenes in two. Three, meh, not as good, but at least we got an ending. But the fourth one, ooh, I'm glad. I mean, everyone's glad the movie failed because they'll never do any more. But what a terrible idea. I will never watch that movie again. I will watch the trilogy again probably someday. I will never watch Matrix 4, ever again, ever again. Horrible movie. <clears throat> All right, number three. Let me look at my top three here. Okay, no, easy, easy. Number three, we've made jokes about this on this podcast before. It is The Next Karate Kid. The Next Karate Kid. Everyone knows how I feel about Karate Kid. We've talked about it in Cobra Kai several times. But just in case you don't know, I love the first movie. The second movie is good. It's one of Benjamin's favorites. And the third movie even before Cobra Kai straightened it out and made it relevant, I love the third movie. It's so over the top and stupid and silly and bad that I actually, as a kid, I loved it. I thought I remember going home because I rented at my um, grandmother's house, came home, told my brothers it was the best one yet. I seriously thought three was for years. I said Karate Kid three is the best. It's better than the original. And watching it again later on in college, I think it was, I was like, oh, oh no, this sucked. <laughs> but I enjoyed the 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 charm of it that was so bad it was awesome kind of thing. But next Karate Kid, and Benjamin and I did go back. When we watched the first three, we didn't watch Next Karate Kid. And then later on, I said, well, let's go ahead and do it. So I can't remember if I bought it. I don't think I bought it. But somehow we rented it or something. Or got it on. I can't remember how we got it. Oh, I hope I hope to God I don't have it on DVD. I don't think I did. I bought the trilogy with one, two, and three, but I didn't buy the four pack with uh, Next Credit Kid on it. So he must have watched it on streaming or something. Either way, it's beyond bad, beyond bad. It is so terrible, so terrible. And I'm worried every season of Cobra Kai that they're going to bring Hilary Swank on there. I'm praying Hilary Swank says no, no, and yo, no again. You know, because I hope she never wants to appear on the show. I don't want next Karate Kid in the Karate Kid world of Karate Kid, even though it is it did take place in that universe because Mr. Miyagi was in that movie and mentions Daniel Son. But that's the only movie they have made zero reference to. They don't ever have to make reference to it again because Daniel wasn't involved with it. But in my gut, I know these writers and they're probably going to if Hillary Swank's game, they're putting her in. Ugh. It is so bad. So bad. I We watched it that one time. I don't think I'll ever watch it again. I say don't think, but if Cobra Kai writers can make sense of it, who knows? Who knows? Anything can go. But I mean, you, three is bad, but funny, but still entertaining. Four is bad and boring. And there is absolutely nothing entertaining about it. Nothing. Not a thing. I wish... I think we did that. I think we covered and talked about this on uh, Saturday Morning Sound Flange years ago. But uh, either way, though, next Karate Kid, they should have nixed the whole series after Karate Kid 3 and then done Cobra Kai, and it would have been a happy world. My number two, 
This is a, this is a strong one here. Uh, Toy Story Four. What a disaster! What what? Th- there is nothing redeeming about Toy Story Four. Toy Story Four is an insult to an excellent franchise. Um, Toy Story One is. I love the Toy Stories. Those are my favorite Pixar movies. Toy Story Two is good. It's great. And you cannot deny that Toy Story 3 is the best of them all. It's like they say the best for last. They were really on top of their game. You know, they'd elevated the storytelling. It was excellent. It was the perfect send-off for the toys. Um, if you wanted to hear more about the toys, they did two direct-to-DVD movies. Uh, t- uh, the Toys of Terror is, man, it's okay. But Toys That Time Forgot, excellent. In fact, when I watched that with my wife, I told her, I said, this should have been the fourth movie. I really enjoyed it. And I, I did recently rewatch that a year or so ago. I still love it. It's a solid movie. It's a solid direct-to-DVD movie. And it beats the tar out of Toy Story 4. I probably, probably, I, I'll never say never on Toy Story because if my little girls want to watch the fourth one and I have the time, I'll probably watch it with them. But that movie is irredeemable. It is so bad. So bad. What was Pixar thinking? It is by far one of the worst movie sequels. I mean, worse than Cars 2. Cars 2 gets a lot of flack. But Cars 2 was just the same, same, same old, same old. And it was okay. But Toy Story 4, I mean, you were just sitting there going, whoa, this is garbage. Such garbage. How dare they do it to what I thought was a pretty excellent trilogy. So Toy Story 4, no thank you, get away, good day, sir, as Gene Wilder says and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You know, you don't get your lifetime supply of chocolate. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> well, I don't know where that came from. It's getting late. Uh, my That was my number two. Number one, this is the first one that I put down. And as I was looking over this, I was like, yes, it's got to be this one. It's a good day to die hard. Let's talk about die hard. I love Die Hard. I love the Die Hard movies. I love them all. The first one is excellent. It is perfect. Way, way shape and sound is perfect. The second one I used to not like. I have grown to appreciate it a whole lot. I still think it's the weakest of the four. But I do enjoy watching it. I do enjoy watching it. It's good. The third movie, excellent. Again, Jeremy Irons is in it. Samuel Jackson's in it. And they do not disappoint. It is a fantastic movie. I remember this is the first Die Hard I got to see in theaters. I didn't. I was too young to watch the other ones in theaters. They came out in, I don't know, 88 and 90 or whatnot. But by the time 92, 93 rolled around, I was old enough to drive and old enough to go sneak off and see R-rated movies without my parents knowing. Truth be told. And this is one of the R-rated movies I went to go see because I had to go see it because I love the first two movies. And the third movie was excellent, and I still think it's excellent today. It is a fantastic movie. When the fourth one was announced, okay, I was like, oh, no. Live Free or Die Hard, I think it was what it was called. I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, please don't do a fourth one. You've made a perfect trilogy. I don't want to see a fourth one. I watched it. It's excellent. I love it. I love it. I love it better than two. Um, it's really solid. I think I think his name is Justin Long. Excellent sidekick. Lots of humor, lots of action. Bruce Willis. This is the last time he'll ever play a good, uh, you know, um, the the cop. John. Oh my gosh, I forgot his name now. But um, it's it's the last time he played the character good. And other than that, you know, everything else. Well, he had, he had a Die Hard battery commercial, which is better, which much a billion times better than a Good Day to Die Hard. A Good Day to Die Hard. Bruce Willis, this is the beginning of his I don't care career. Now, you could say, was this the time he started having that, you know, his mental problems? Perhaps. Perhaps. Because you can see he has checked out of this movie. He has checked out. He's just running through the motions. He get, he delivers zero energy during this. He could care less. He's just going home, he's taking a paycheck home with him, and that's it. I don't know what the last really good Bruce Willis movie was, but I all and I begged, I begged the Hollywood gods to give us something after this because I wanted it to end on a positive note. And I've tried, I've tried so many times watching, I think two other times to watch this movie to try to find something redeeming, anything redeeming from this. No, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible story. It has a terrible quote unquote twist. Characters you don't care about. His son is boring too. 
from top to bottom, it's a horrible movie, and it's a it's a shame, an embarrassment upon the whole franchise. But anyway, 30 minutes are up. There are my top whatever, eight, I think I named there. Let me know in the comments what your what yours are, and I will see you next time on Saturday morning, Simulflange.